Hi, my dear Rostrov family. Today I'm here with uh, Michael and we are going to be speaking about a little bit of a human design. So why I have chosen uh, this topic is because uh, I had a kind of a reading with him recently and I was actually quite impressed. The very first time I heard about human design was approximately about two, three years ago. And then I had a reading with someone and to be frank, I wasn't amazed. But when Michael shared some information about my human design chart, then I was quite impressed. So I thought I would like to actually work with him, to collaborate with him, and uh, and basically just to have a chat with him about uh, a particular chart and then what he has got to share. So what we are going to be doing today is that we are going to be looking at uh, Johnny Depp's chart. He's a hot topic nowadays, so why not? And uh, as I said, I'm collaborating with Michael. So if you would like to have a reading with him about your own hum human design map, then you can go on my website, astrovictor.com. You can book a reading with him. Uh, I think he's going to uh, amaze you too. So hi, Michael. How are you? Hi, Victor. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So if you just introduce yourself a little bit to the audience, why you decided to do human design, how did it help you on your journey? Sure, uh, a few years ago I found human design and I wasn't really interested in it. Similar to Victor, it didn't really resonate with me. Um, so uh, in the pandemic, I started getting more into it because it showed up again in my reality. Um, and when I learned about my energy type, which is manifesting generator, um, I started to notice that, that that was me. That's how I use my energy. So I digged into the system and I started looking at other people's charts, my family, my friends, and I started to notice that this had um, a lot of interesting uh, information. And I was familiar with astrology, which is part of human design. So I was like, this is something I'm, I'm interested to dive deep into. Um, human design is compiled of the chakras. It's compiled, compiled of the astrology, the Chinese I Ching, and also Kabbalah, the tree of life. So when you look at the, the map, I'll pull it up. Uh, you can see that we'll pull up Johnny Depp's. You can see if you turn this around, it creates a tree of life. So there's a lot of interesting things. It's esoteric knowledge, ancient wisdoms. There's quantum physics evolved and genetics. So these I Ching numbers give us more information. Um, and I'll pull up another chart where we can see the I Ching and how it relates to the astrology, which is really a uh, really cool as well for people who are listening, who are into astrology and wanna get into human design from that perspective. Um, so yeah, I really love this system. It can tell us about um, our health as well, which is a big thing. I'm very interested in nutrition. Um, I have some things going on in my sixth house, I think. So I have always been interested in cleansing and human design can tell us about our best environment our strongest sense, our, our digestion. So this blew me away because it tells us that everyone is individualized. Uh, we're not homogenous. Um, so it's really important, I think, to discover this information. Um, and they say that human design was meant for the children because if we can let the kids allow, you know, allow them to be who they are, they can, they can manifest and live with less, uh, I don't wanna say pain, but they can live in ease and more, uh, more clarity of who they are within. So I, I absolutely love this system. One of the things I really liked about uh, the reading you gave me was uh, that you said that I had a bonus life, which kind of a little bit of a lazy type of uh, energy, let's put it that way. And it really made me sense. Actually, it really, you know, it made sense to me because I do have got North Node in the fifth house, which on one hand, it can indicate that I have to learn to have fun mm. uh, but at the same time uh, the ruler of my north node is in the 10th house mm. so how I kind of interpreted that is that I don't know I don't necessarily need to be you know not working but I need to be able to have a balance and this was a struggle for me for at least 25 years actually uh, because uh, I had the tendency to work 16 hours a day and I never got tired. Now, from an astrological perspective, I do have got the South Node in Capricorn, 
mm-hmm. in a very tight conjunction to Paula Satene. And Paula Satene is the asteroid of profession. Mm. So I, and of course, I do have got a stellium in my 10th house also, which uh, is kind of, uh, you know, all about profession and making sure that the career journey is really smooth. Um, but it really made sense because actually last year I decided, you know what, I am not going to be doing seven, eight clients a day. That's just not normal in a sense. And also I burn out very quickly and then I'm going to hate mm. my job. So I decided to cut it back to num- uh, to three clients a day. Mm. And now actually I'm only doing two clients a day because I realized that I, I need to go to the gym. I need to walk my dogs. I need to have a coffee with my friends and all these type of things. So I was very happy to hear that I kind of have got this bonus life, which means that I need to be able to learn to have fun. Now, Moon, actually, my chart is in the sign of Sagittarius. And Mm. my lifelong dream is that I live three months in each country. And then after I move on, and then I have a little bit of a fun, I do a bit of work. And then, uh, and then, yeah, and then I travel again. So after we had this conversation, I decided exactly this is the way how I'm going to be living my life because there is no point in working 16 hours. Uh, It's just not productive enough. Yeah, exactly. And I I had a client with this. It's four and one. You're four one, right? The opportunist investigator. So it's all about having relations. It's like you get your best opportunities from people, you know, so you don't need to stress and overwork yourself. Like your energy is like, you don't need to hustle. Like, you know, the the South node in uh, Capricorn, you said, I think, I think Johnny Depp is this as well. Um, Like a Kabbalistic point of view is, is to be worried about the, the work life, whereas cancer is getting more in touch with your freedom, your intuition, your home life. Um, yeah, so the profile number is very interesting, and I'm going to tap into that now with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Obviously, many people can't find Amber Heard's birth time, so um, I played around with her human design, and Johnny Depp has a personal karma, and Amber Heard has a transpersonal karma. Personal karma, they're here to do really what lights them up, and what they, they're correcting it within, their confidence kind of thing. Uh, transpersonal, which I have, is to work with other people more to correct the karma, almost like I'm supposed to meet people in my reality to to learn how to um, to overcome any like karmic debts. Uh, I think of that like the South Node in Aries I have. I'm very impulsive. So I, 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 I learn by working with other people to kind of tone that down and create a Libra balance. Um, let me pull up Johnny Depp, Amber Hurt. Um, So when you get into human design, the most important thing they say to learn first is about your energy type. um, And you learn about your authority, which is your intuition. It's how you make decisions. Actually, I'm not going to pull up. Let me pull up Johnny Depp, because that's a more accurate. Is it an accurate time, Johnny Depp? Yeah, it's an um, AA accuracy. So it's very accurate. Okay. Um, Okay, one second. Can you see behind this or you can only see the safari, right? You can only see this? Yeah, I only can see the... Okay, good. <laughs> see my background. Okay. Um, firstly, I want to start with Amber Heard uh, energy type because it stays consistent through the whole day. Uh, she's a generator, uh, which Laszlo and I are both a generator type. Uh, I'm a manifesting generator. I'll get into that. But the generators are like the worker bees. They have sustainable life force energy coming from the sacral. Like they get lit up about things like, oh, I want to study astrology. It's lighting up my sacral. I have sustainable energy to do what I love. When a generator is living in a healthy manner, they're kind of like the people driving to work who are have energy to work long hours. Johnny Depp is not this type. Johnny Depp is actually a manifester. These are 10% of the population. Uh, Adolf Hitler was a manifester. <laughs> Putin is a manifester. George Bush um, is a manifester. This is like the kings and queens in the, if we think historically. Whereas the generator has energy to like pick up the hay, you know, get the vegetables uh, to help the people. Um, so the manifester doesn't have this Um, anything white in your human design chart is flexible. So they can easily like burn out. Uh, Similar with another type, uh, we can talk about it another time, but we'll focus on the manifesto, Johnny Depp. These people are sensitive and uh, the not self theme is anger when they're not living their design. 
They really want to be at peace. When they're living their design, they feel at peace. And I gave a session recently and someone said, even before I pulled up the chart, they said, um, I feel at peace when I'm meditating. Like I, I feel at peace. And the word peace is literally their satisfaction theme. So I want to look at some things. I, I, these energies, we see the astrology here. And there's some energies that I was looking at, like in his south node, um, it's in the, the root pressure. This might be getting a little advanced, but um, I think they, they've said online that he suffered from depression and has gone to like drugs and alcohol. I saw in the astrology is like a Scorpio IC, uh, Neptune in the fourth house. His south node, uh, 54 here and 60, are in this root pressure. And in human design, sometimes these gates, these genetic codons, can trigger a depression in the person. So I found that really interesting to be in the position of the south node. And it's in six, which is the role model. So it means that he has to go through a lot of trial and error to overcome this energy. Um, and this over here is in three, which is even more trial and error. He, he will continue to go through this uh, process to overcome this feeling. Um, and it's connected to his emotions, which tells us that there's like a need. Um, gate 19, sometimes it can be codependent. So obviously we're not gonna um, take any sides here. It's, this is just for our like research of their energy. I don't know who is the, uh, who's the real aggressor. You know what I mean? I, do you know, do you look in the astrology to have any clue or? <laughs> I mean, one thing uh, you mentioned about um, any type of mental health problem or depression, I mean, uh, when it comes to Johnny Depp, he's got two indications easily. And one mm -hmm. of them is Uranus and the Mars conjunction in Virgo. Okay. Uh, now, I associate uh, depression with Mars uh, for multiple reasons. I'm not going to necessarily go into that. Yes, Saturn plays a significant role as well as the moon, mm -hmm. but Mars is the real ruler of the, of the uh, depression, in my opinion. And because Uranus is is right there it kind of what it does is that it 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 really it really makes uh, the mood in a sense up and down and of course it's a in a in a in a ver in, in the sign of virgo which loves worrying which is kind mm. of like the nail type of energy because they can be extremely nitty uh, uh, nitty picky when it comes to themselves as well they are their worst critics overall but the other one which is actually very uh, prominent here and that's going to be the south node and the moon conjunction and typically the moon south node conjunction is kind of like an unfinished business in the past mm -hmm. and I'm very anxious that I kind of need to finish that business I'm here to kind of do something rather than just sitting on my laurels and you know the fried chicken is going to fly in or <laughs> window. Yeah. I know that they are here to accomplish something but they sometimes overdo it and uh, it goes to the extreme. Moon and South Node can indicate bipolar, anxiety, unexplained trauma. They don't want to experience their feelings and therefore they get detached and they suppress their feelings while the other one wants to kind of control them. So, and of course that moon in his chart is in a detrimental position and whatever South Node touches, it tends to deplete that too. So these are uh, very prominent indications of depression. And there is a third one. Uh, Jessica Adams tends to believe that depression is also, or also belongs to Ceres. And I really agree with her. And uh, this guy also has got Pluto, Ceres and Juno conjunction. So it could show that uh, uh, depression can be coming from partnership. Uh, and Pluto and Ceres are very interesting because Pluto stole uh, the daughter of Ceres. And that's why Ceres became kind of depressed. And that's why she brought uh, famine and uh, difficult weather conditions onto Earth. Mm. Um, so he has got quite loads of indications of depression in his chart. Yeah, I agree. And uh, he has an open splenic area, which means this is how we deal with fear. And anyone who has an open area, you're, you're constantly absorbing it. So with this, sometimes people can hold on grudges. In human design, they say this person can hold on a grudge uh, from someone. Uh, I mean, even if you have a colored in, of course, you can hold in a grudge, but he's very sensitive to people's anxieties. And Amber Heard has it, um, she has that defined. 
And what's really interesting I was looking at is that her emotions area is open through the whole day with the birth time. It's always open. She, she has an undefined emotions area, which means she's constantly feeling other people's emotions. When she's alone, she's actually very calm, but she feels his emotions. He has like a lot of uh, energies. I won't get into every single one, but 36 is like solving emotional issues. Uh, it's like, I, I have this too. So when they're younger, it's like they like, you know, start crying or something, it, it can burst. Um, and he has the open splenic area. So he is constantly feeling when they were together, her, her fears and anxieties. Um, this is actually like a fear of death or fear of time running out. So it can trigger the person. Um, what's really interesting is that they're both actors. They have an open head. I have an open head. So like, uh, it's more abstract. I, my head, I get distracted easily where Laszlo has the defined Ajna. He's, he's here to share his ideas with his, his viewers. It's like people want to see what you have to say. So actors, I've seen a lot of actors, I've read charts who have an open head and they have this, um, I just thought it's interesting, the salesman right here, 26, they both have that. These people, it can, I don't want to say swindler, but they can sell something to you and you don't even know why. They say in human design, this person can literally get you to buy it or get you to believe it. Um, so I thought that was very interesting that they both have that in their chart. Um, a couple other things, you know, Johnny Depp is a 2-4. The profile number is nothing you, you have to do anything with. It's just how your personality shows up. It's the personal karma for 2-4. And it's the hermit, actually, in the I Ching. The 2 has a more hermit energy. He's actually not an extrovert person. He's not like, you know, this generator going out in the, the public. It's very, I think, awkward for him to be on the main stage right now. I was looking something aspecting his uh, 10th house, some kind of... Uh, uh, thing going on, you know, where this, this Saturn, I think, this karmic thing of relationships aspecting, or in, in the transit, it was aspecting the 10th house. So I think this is actually very uncomfortable for him. And my intuitive feeling is that he is still going through this depressive, uh, these episodes, we just don't see it. And these addictions are, he is coming to terms with it right now, I think, like he has to overcome it right now. It's like a karmic energy. I mean, uh... In his astrological chart, we can actually see that he is more of a private person because most of his planets really underneath the horizon. Uh, but there is that uh, major factor, the sun in the 11th house, which is very much about, you know what, that's the ruler of the rising sign. I'm going to have to put myself out there if I want to be successful in any ways. Now that sun actually falls onto uh the second deacon which is a libra deacon and that's actually the fourth uh dwarf as well so that's a capricorn uh, dwarf so this is really showing that this person is ready to work extremely hard to attain popularity in the world because he somehow wants to move others uh, yeah. but i completely agree because he does have move so the sun is on capricorn dwarf and the moon is in the sign of Capricorn with the south node, I think popularity drains him as well, big time. But while well, a Leo rising sign is very talented to kind of hide that, you know, too proud to admit that, you know what, maybe I should not be doing this. Mm. Another thing which I wanted to mention here very quickly, you said swiddling. And uh, Swidling is ruled by Jupiter and Mercury, actually, in, uh, in um, uh, astrology. And I find it very interesting that Jupiter is bang on actually trining his ascendant. Uh, you were talking about this salesman kind of like can talk you into whatever you yeah. want them to make, uh, whatever they want you to make, uh, they want you to believe. And he's got that constellation with a very tight, Jupiterian uh, trine, in my opinion, in the ninth house. Interesting. You know, I don't interrupt you, but what I found interesting is his Jupiter is in gate 21, which is the gate of control. These people are very good at controlling resources. I have this. So I'm really good at like, when I was younger, I used to like steal food like, from the table and they'd be like, wait, you just ate our dinner. So these people can be good at like controlling, especially if it's in the swindle of Jupiter, this energy, they could, they could amp it up a bit. It depends. Again, it depends what, what position it's in. So what we're saying is don't, because you have gate 21, it doesn't mean that you are like this. 
if your gate 21 is in, you know, your son, maybe you work in a business where you're good at controlling resources. Do you know what I mean? So take it with a grain of salt. And what happens if, for instance, your moon is uh, in gate 21, then emotionally you might be controlling towards others. Exactly. So that's what I work with in clients because this, I do the health coaching on the side and I thought this system is telling us about this person, you know, I can, I can see it right now what they're going through. So it's incredible that we get these little micro details um, and also how people can make money or something, you know what I mean? With their mercury or, you know, there's, there's interesting things we can find his, I think there is mother issues. I Googled it like about his mother. I just type in Johnny Depp mother, but the 38 is the gate of the fighter. So there was some kind of struggle when he was younger, the Scorpio, I see in Placidus, um, you know, I don't know, Neptune can be sometimes delusions or it can be no boundaries. Was there no boundaries at home? You know what I mean? Uh, there are some other uh, archetype issues there. I know because uh, I was holding a presentation a couple of weeks ago about uh, the chart ruler. And then we were actually analyzing um, uh, Donny, I mean, um, uh, uh, his chart. And then we Googled and then he had some uh, mother issues. There was a divorce going on there. Mommy was uh, raising the children on her own. And there were some uh, major issues there. And the mommy issues in his chart can be seen from the moon and the south node conjunction to start with. Um, and uh, if we look at um, his Venus, which is very tightly squared by Saturn, uh, if we say that um, Venus rules the mom department here, which is the ruler of the 10th house, then we can also see that from there. But the fact that Neptune is around the IC, it kind of indicates that as a child, he had to lose something. He, he had to go uh, an element of a suffering, mm. uh, which might uh, push him towards a spiritual journey. Um, so definitely... You know, we experience things in our life to to kind of make our soul stronger. And he needed that experience to probably achieve that uh, popularity, what he kind of signed up for in his company contract. Yeah, I think. And, and from my perspective, what popped out is the transit in the eighth house. In my opinion, like Kabbalistically, anything transiting the eighth house can bring up some you know, some hidden stuff, you know, sexually or, uh, yeah, some things you don't really want to know. So that's, I think is interesting at this time with the transits, but um, I don't think this is over yet. I think this is going to go on for a while. I think it's going to, it's going to trigger more stuff in the public as well. Um, I originally, I, I thought, it, you know, I, I'm not taking any sides, but the more we analyze this, it's like, we don't really know who, who is who, but what's interesting is she is gate 63 of doubts. This is like doubting other people when they're together. By the way, we pick up other people's energy. Uh, so you might not have it defined in your chart, but if you're with someone who doubts a lot, um, you might feel their doubts. We need doubt in science. It's, this energy is like logic, you know? So we do need to doubt things in order for it to be correct. There are low sides to these energy and high sides. But why I'm saying this is because I, I found in his Chiron, um, there is a right here, he has Chiron in this chart in doubts. So really interesting that his wound is like, he might be doubting himself or, you know what I mean? So if it's in Chiron, it's like uh, maybe Amber was like really boiling him up and really uh, making him more angry because he has an emotional wave as well. When you have this colored in, there is a natural chemical process, they say in human design, where the person can feel dips. And this, this is a tribal wave, it's called, he has, which means that, you know, everything can be fine and little things get under his skin for a couple of weeks and then it explodes. I know this because my mom has this, sorry, she's going to watch this, you know, so it, it can, you know, little things get under their skin and then it explodes. So I hope, you know, he didn't hurt her or something. I mean, you know, I think he, he was very angry and maybe she, some, I don't know, I'm not going to guess what happened, but with this working with clients, I just say like, it's better for you to like, learn how to cool off when you have this, this bout of energy. Um, so, so 863 is kind of like an anger gate. 
no, sorry, I, I'm jumping around. It's like my open head. Um, 63, I was saying, was in his Chiron. It's this gate of doubts. And Amber Heard, I feel, was triggering that because she has 63 naturally. And he has it in like his Chiron human design. It's, it's, it's showing up on this chart. So I thought maybe that this is a very karmic uh, thing, their relationship. Um, and what I was saying is that he has an emotional wave that will after a while, things will get under his skin and then it, he becomes very angry and will have a moment or something. Um, of course, you can work with people to, to uh, get them to understand it. Can they use it in a Mars way, in an athletic way to relieve that stress? Or are they going to drugs and suppressing it? So I think he's, he's making the, obviously making his reality a bit harder for himself. Um, can I translate that uh, Chiron please, on 863? as a, uh, I doubt that I can be a great healer yeah. or a great teacher uh, because Chiron is the healer and the teacher, but um, he had to become a teacher and a healer as well at the same time, but he wasn't able to heal himself. So yeah. he, I doubt that he wouldn't be able to heal uh, maybe from some past life experiences or childhood experiences. Can we translate it that way? Yes, I agree. And I think that as well, uh, Chiron in the eighth house is unseen wounds. So it's almost like they're doubting that it will ever be able to fix. I might as well just keep going with the, the lower vibration of drugs and different things. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I'm qualified to say this, but maybe Kabbalistically uh, with this position, there was sexual um, abuse in past life, if that's legit. So maybe he is could be abusing and you know what I mean we don't know it could come from with Chiron it could just be from the previous lifetime that wounded him deeply um, I mean from a, a current life point of view if we say that uh, the ruler of that Chiron is Neptune then it does relate to the father because Neptune is in the fourth house if we say that uh, Jupiter is the ruler of Pisces then it might be coming from um, uh, something to do with uh, uh, relatives but also that could be the emotional, not emotional, sorry, the uh, unhealthy behavior of the father, because that's the sixth from the fourth, which could mm. talk about the health situation of a father or just an unhealthy behavior and approach to life. Mm. Yeah, I'm just trying to see what 63 is in which... I see in Pisces, in kind of the second decan, in the 12th house. <laughs> exactly. Isn't that okay? So this is great. So for people that want to see, you know, how the gates line up to the astrology, it's interesting, you know? Okay. Um, so it's kind of like a, uh, what is this? So it's always starting on Aries and then um, Taurus and... Uh, yeah, the 63 is naturally in Pisces or something. But then the other layer, it gets very complex, is that we're interpreting it in your profile lines here. So it can be 0.6, which means they are they become a role model if they master it. 0.5 is the heretic. 0.4 is relations, opportunist. 0.3 is trial and error. 0.2 is the hermit. They might not show it. It has to be seen and recognized by the people. 0.1 is the investigator, which you have as one of your, it's a love of research. And the person has to research it in order to overcome it. It gets very complex. So that's why a reading is like good to go, you know, with a client, it's good to go very slow. Um, so the person can, I mean, I want to preface that when you're learning human design, they say to focus on your, your, uh, your energy type and your, um, and your strategy and authority. One second, I'm going to close the window. Okay. Well, in the meantime, I find uh, human design very fascinating, guys. Um, I think it gives a, a very good extra layer to astrology. And this is the, one of the reasons why I kind of enjoyed listening to Michael because, uh, you know, I started thinking and I started asking him questions. Okay, you know, I can see that my personality is, let's say, 3.6 sun, but in design, I see 41.2. So, you know, what does it mean? And then he gave me clues about it. And it really made sense when I started tying up together with my own chart. So I really kind of recommend uh, if you want to get to know yourself a little bit more, then you definitely should be digging into human design a little bit more. And then we can do that with Michael as well, if you are interested. 
So I'm curious to know how many types uh, we have in human design. So there are five types. There is the manifester, which we've been talking about, Johnny Depp. We have the generator, which is Amber Heard we were talking about. Then we have a manifesting generator, which is a combination of a manifester and a generator, a hybrid type. Then there's the reflector, which is 1% of the population. And then we have a projector. Uh, so they all work accordingly and they have different ways that they utilize their energy um, and different ways that they can make decisions as well. Okay, maybe we can uh, uh, make a video about each type in the near future, just uh, maybe a 15-20 minutes description of how a generator plays out and so forth. Um, and that would be lovely. Probably the audience would uh, love to know more about that. One more question I have. If I want to be checking um, what my type is, where can I do that? Is there a website I can go on? And yes, is there a website I can go on and check what type yeah. I am? Yeah, there are three websites I recommend. MyHumanDesign.com, which tells you a lot of information for free on the side already. You can use Genetic Matrix uh, or Jovian Archive is another one. Uh, all our great resources. Okay, great. Well, guys, this, this was just a short introductionary about um, human design. So if you are interested to get to know yourself a little bit better, go on my website, check Michael out. I think he's very good at this. Um, I definitely recommend him and I rarely do that. So we are looking forward to be making another video for you in regards to human design as well. Thank you very much, Michael, for joining me today. And maybe we can do something in the very near future. Thank you, Victor. Take care, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.